Hey guys, I'm Filthy Robot. Welcome back uh, to my campaign with a Roomba, our Mended to Heaven campaign. How's it going, Roomba? It's going pretty well. You're I, doing well uh, over there here. Yeah, I got another subject. I uh, kind of wish I could have created two, but I wasn't able to. I could have possibly if I'd taken Kale, but I decided to take Daka instead because the estuary, which may have been a mistake. I don't know. We'll see. Of course, now I can't fabricate claims. You know what? No, no, no. You know what? I, I've decided against it. No, wait, never mind. Sorry. It's a peace deal. Are you on pause? Yeah, go ahead, sir. I was going to say, I can seize the land back because he's a vassal, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't, there's no other course available. I guess I don't really need Spy Network Strength on Bengal at all anymore. Sadly. No, just me getting the fucking negative again. So my own Yervan Yer rebels, who uh, hypothetically are my all my beliefs and whatnot, don't get this minus shock bonus. So bad. So bad when you're an entire mountain terrain and you have nonstop rebels and you get negatives everywhere and they get they don't. Makes yeah, these fights a little bit scary. Seems frustrating. Yeah. It's a little bit frustrating. Dai Viet wants to become my ally. Dai Viet hates Lang Zhang, Shampa, and Kimmer. He's got a truce with Kimmer, but not with Lang Zhang, who I do want to fight. Why do I have loans? When did I even get loans? <laughs> I mean, I don't you remember have... this. Just one, apparently, but. I think it's the forts. The forts keep getting turned on, and then I, I forget about them. By where my money keeps di just disappearing to. This horde unity national unrest has got to go. Got to figure that out. Oh, nice. I actually have enough uh, favors that I can call in Ait Thaya, who's practically like my... Uh, he's not like an Ottomans, but he's he's a big hammer that I can, you know, wield once every 20 years, I think it is. Did you see that in the uh, the favors tooltip, it'll tell you when you get your next favor now? No, I didn't. I saw that they, uh, there was a tooltip increase that I really liked, which was when it tells me when you get a certain type of advisor, it would tell you uh, what that advisor did, which I really liked. Uh, yeah, I that's, noticed that's good. Favor thing. Yeah, there, there are two typos in it. I feel obligated to point them out. It says, we will gain the next favor, spelled the British way with an O-U-R, even though every other reference to it is F-A-V-O-R. And then, for some reason, there's an extra space after the month of January. <laughs> so somebody added it to the game, but they didn't really think about it very much. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll take a misspelled tooltip that actually tells me what's going on over no tooltip at all, if I had to choose between them. That's, that's fair. Good point. Next favor by January. Yeah. Alright. I keep waiting for something positive to change. Like, I got enough money, I can do something. Or something. But no. Right, so Splendor. What, do I, what am I going to do about this Splendor thing, huh? You've 800 Splendor, huh? You yeah. Tell me all the glorious uh, things you can do with that. Let's take a look at it together, and you, you tell me what your thoughts are. All right. That way we can just at least strategize a little bit about it. Okay. Um, so, I don't so personally feel like... you don't have to do these like, in order. You can just do whichever one you want. Yeah, they're all green for me right now. I can choose okay. one of them. So, I think that uh, Feudal du Jour Law... I don't think I'm going to take that. These are not permanent. These are not like the entire game. It's just till the next age. So... And then whenever the age, the next age starts, we you lose whatever splendor decisions you've taken. What is allow transfer subject peace treaty at cost half? All right. So if you are at war with a, a guy who has a nation as a subject nation, 
and you occupy the subject nation's capital, then you have a peace treaty, a peace treaty where you can take control of their dependency. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. And I've it, never done that. It cuts the diplo point cost in half and the war score cost. No, just the war score cost in half for doing that. But you still pay diplo points because it's never part of any real cast of belly. Although with your cast of belly, I think you actually with the tribal one, I think you can vassalize. So that would be a really good one for you, the transfer subject one. Yeah. As would war taxes if you're always at war. Uh, I'd be leaning towards the... I mean, what's your aggressive expansion at right now? It's not really been the thing that stops me from expanding. Oh, really? No. Like, I've had some, but I don't I don't think that that's worth it. Personally. And my aggressive expansion taxes impacts positive. are decrease in... What do I... What, what page is that on to trigger war taxes? I never use them. Economic. Economic page. Okay. 50, 50 military points to lower your land maintenance and land naval maintenance. Sorry, naval maintenance by 20%. Huh. I mean, you can only just, have an active during war. Just looking at that, you said you don't need the unrest modifier. You said the aggressive expansion isn't relevant to you. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's any subjects you could capture. That one's an interesting one, but it may or may not be something you could use. I mean, barring that, mm. you don't have... Uh, once you go to Denmark, some specific ones. Adaptive combat terrain is only if you're on defense here. Higher developed colonies, you don't have any colonies. Cav armies, you're probably not super thrilled about cav. So that literally leaves you nope. improved war taxes or transfer subject. That's what you got. Well, the adaptive combat train is not just in your capital or in defensive train. It's any any land that you fight in that is the same combat, the same terrain type as oh, your capital. That's kind of an interesting one. I didn't understand that. I thought that was a defensive thing. This is so, like, if I have mountain terrain, I see. That's pretty yeah, cool. That actually yeah, be a really solid one. Yeah, for me, the two that appeal are improved war taxes and adaptive combat terrain. And I think I'm going to take the adaptive combat terrain. Yeah, because I feel like that could be more useful situationally against rebels, where uh, war taxes requires you to be at war. I don't know. I'm gonna, we'll try it out. See how it goes. Okay. So my capital, I now have a combat bonus in grasslands. There's not very much grasslands over here, but wait, farmlands are not grasslands. Damn. Any chance for the same? Yeah, sorry. They're the same color though. <laughs> well, that's got it narrowed down. Whatever. I can. If they try to siege my capital, then. I can have a combat bonus in my capital, <laughs> and that'll be about it. <laughs> yeah. I love I'm, I'm still in manpower debt. Ah, yeah. <sighs> fuck. Tell me how you really feel. Struggling to figure out what I'm going to do to get ahead here. I really needed that war with Beratia to go well. It seemed like it was such a good spot to have happen, but now... I'm waiting on favors. I hate being in that situation where I don't have very many favors and my allies are weak. So... Well, at least I am improving relations with the Ottomans. Thank you, uh, Diplomat Automa Automation. Interesting. My next door neighbor will actually give me transfer trade power. Even though I can't offer vassalization to him. I think I might wait for Ming to take Admin Tech 6. He'll probably take it soon, and I don't expect that uh, it's going to take five years for the Renaissance to increase the cost of taking it. And the other allies being broken by pretender rebels. Probably not too bad for him, honestly. Okay, I can declare war on Eurotasia again. I was considering, uh, Acacia, whatever it is, just going to war again. I don't have manpower and I'm still in debt, but I kind of need that gold mine. I, don't I, uh, I read that you can't transfer trade power more than 50% in the patch notes, and I just assumed that that was the same for transfer trade, but I think that you can still do the slider on this one. Hmm. So that was a mistake. So we'll try one more time. Alright. Oh, how one... I feel about these guys. Um, I'm going to go till November the 24th and take a pause if that's alright. Yep. Champa seeds lands to Diviet. Diviet's at peace now, which means he's all about my war. Okay, real quick, let me just check this transfer trade power slider. Ah, okay, it automatically sets it to the percentage they're willing to accept anyway. 
looks like. How convenient is that? Pretty convenient. Not bad. Okay, uh, there are so many mothballed forts here. This guy's on tech six, five. Senwi's got 14k troops to my 13. Whoa, Longjong's got 21k. All right. Good. One pause. And I'm sorry. I'm looking at this this fantastic ledger. It's amazing. Yes, but and this this episode has been fantastically looking at the Age of Discovery, followed by right, fantastically looking fine, at the ledger. Fine, fine, fine. You're all whiny about it. Fine. Good. I still have not made an heir. I, my ruler died, and I think I just got like a randomly generated character. Mm -hmm. uh, because that seems to be what happens. If I hadn't gone tribal conquest on that last one, I would have won that war too. If I'd gone just regular conquest, because it wasn't that I couldn't occupy his territories, I could just never get his fucking cab. I just need to... I think I'm going to declare war. Okay. Enjoying I need that. one day. on pause and then speed two for this war until I get some of these occupations out of the way. There's two mothballed forts owned by Hisenui. That is four fort level out of the total of five in his country. He's got a, a level one capital fort and then two other forts that he's got mothballed, so it's good. I get to basically just swoop in and Steal occupy stuff. the crap. Yeah, I love nice. I love sniping mothballed forts. It's like the best thing ever. It's a big swing in tempo in terms of the war if you can grab a couple key forts super early. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool if you could set like little like conditional alerts. Like I want to know when Ming takes the next tech. Oh, I can't be called in. Lost my ally. You're in dishonor their clan. Oh, you dishonored a call? Yeah, Ouch. I'm not fighting Ming. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, yeah, that's no. Yeah, that's not a real option. Did you not realize that he could declare on you? Uh, that, well, the, <laughs> my my thought was this. I thought there had already been a Ming Orient war. And I thought uh, Orient had, won, had lost that war and was a tributary of Ming. And I thought when I had checked it, in fact, that I'd seen that, but I guess it hadn't been. Just, uh, seems bad. Man, there is, there is a major bug right now, I think. I'm looking at this peace seal again with uh, a, a secondary participant. And it zero dip to separate piece of guy for conquest. I don't, I don't understand how or why, but I'll take it. That seems kind of major. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. Oh, I remember, I got to figure out what we're doing this camp. What I'm doing this campaign to get back in this. This is excruciating right now. Okay, I've got four out of four relations right now. Aracon is one, he's my subject. Um, I kinda wish I had another relationship slot. I could always give Divey at land and just break up the alliance. I think I will. Ah, shoot, I, ro I did a royal marriage on him. Be 
need that Diplo rep, didn't need that prestige loss. Just needed allies. Alright, can we fabricate? No. Why won't they do this in debt? Ming doing in this war. Not great. Wow. 97 and 96 autonomy in this land? That's horrible. Yep. Pretty bad numbers. Still at 22% devastation in most of my country. That's not good. Why'd you do that? Don't know why I did that. I don't recommend it. Rebels are still trending up. So my my resting uh, unrest with uh, my degree of legitimacy with zero war exhaustion, I rest at rebel spawning. That's got to be that was somehow. That's just crippling right now. Oh, come on. This is bullshit. This is such bullshit. What happened now? So I have an ally. Korshin is my ally, right? Yes. I was looking to declare war in Beratia. So I looked at it, and Korshin was not willing to declare war in Beratia, even if I promised them lands, because they were massively in debt. So Korshin has now just declared war on Beratia, and, uh, and called me in. I have two favors with them. I don't know how the fuck they managed to call me in. They haven't defended me. I have four favors with them. They don't have ten favors with me. So are they calling... Does it say somewhere if they're calling me in on a promise of land? I think it should, yeah. They promised us territorial gains from this war. Okay. So they did what I wanted to do anyways. Yeah, but they get to decide the peace deal. Yeah. So... It sucks. Luck. Hopefully uh, hopefully they give you a fair, a fair deal. Yeah. I don't know that they will, but... Get over here, Vassal. I need you. But it's the is the fight I wanted. It's just I wanted it to be the exact opposite, right? I was going to do the exact same thing, but they were having no part of it. Hmm. I'm looking at uh, Bengal being pretty upset. 60 more aggressive expansion. All right, I got negative 20 some reasons here. on uh, tech level 4 militarily. I don't know what's going on with this zero dip separate pieces, but I love it. <laughs> it reminds so me of... So you're just like gobbling up huge portions of land at no diplo, diplo cost? Yeah, I, I mean, I, okay, so I, I declare war on Langjiang, and I co it to Senwei, and I'm allowed to take whatever the hell I want for zero dip. I mean, it's ridiculous amounts of aggressive expansion, but I'm on taking... On the co target or not? Yeah, on the co Well, the co-belligerent, you're supposed to have that. That's the whole point of having a co-belligerent. No, as a, as a separate piece. Oh, a, separate a separate piece, piece is supposed to always cost dip, and it's not costing any at all. Yeah, that's weird. So, that's awesome. Well, first thing I got cut out. Good. Well, this is a, a battle of the century here. I'm going to win, dude. You have no morale. You could just leave this fight, please. Thank you. Come on, I'm not even asking for your entire country, just most of it. <laughs> I think I missed out an opportunity to stack wipe there. Shoot. Thank you. 
for these horses I'm using. Alright, uh, I'm gonna pause for just a second. Because I just took all this land and. Six can't get those, get rid of those either. Since I don't actually want any of this territory, can I unpause now? Yeah, go ahead. This is another little exploit that I've figured out that you can do, is that uh, even if I couldn't have gotten that zero-dip peace deal, which was awesome, by the way, uh, I declared war on Langjiang, saying I was going to call in Dai Viet on a promised territory. My real war goal was, my real war target was Hsinwi. I got everything I wanted from Hsinwi, and now I just white peace the war, goal, the war leader Langjiang. White peace means... I didn't dishonor the valid, like, you know, the promise of territory, so... Because I didn't take anything. So they're not allowed to be upset with me for not giving them anything, even though I forced them into a war. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Seems pretty strong. I don't know why. I just, I can't not abuse it. Very cleverly. All right. Can I have one day? I uh, no. <laughs> now you can have one day. Okay. All right. Pause and. Okay, so dive yet? I'm sorry, but we actually can't be friends. I know we have a royal marriage. Um, I'm going to rival you now. So we can break that royal marriage for free. I'm now going to release. You have no subject whom you can release. What? It's not true. There's a Diviet core up in his anyway. Alright, can I uh can I unpause for a sec again? Yes, please. I don't understand why it's not letting me. You have no subject whom you could release. Why not? Ali. Ali considers this to be one of her core provinces. What are you talking about, game? I can release that. Right, this doesn't make any sense. It says right here, Dali considers this to be one of her core provinces. This country may be created from this province or appear if a in a new as a new country if a ro revolt goes strong enough. He's got the core. All right, well, okay, I guess I'll have to figure that out between now and the next session, because uh, it's about that time. All right, well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Yeah, and, uh, we'll see you again see you in a bit.